That is absolutely adorable. So it is, of course, Pet Wednesday. And we're talking about a very, very interesting dog meat today. The Bloodhound, just like the one you just saw howling there on your screen. <laughs> And the one you just heard howling in studio as well. There we go. So Sarah G is back with us and she is a bloodhound owner together with her pup, Dr. Watson. Thank you. Welcome back, Sarah. Thank you. So I guess that's unique when it comes to bloodhounds is that they, <laughs> that they kind of do that. Yeah. That, yes, it is unique yeah. to bloodhounds and they can be quite vocal. Oh, really? So they don't really bark, eh? No, they don't. Um, they roo, um, <laughs> as you can it. hear. Yeah. Okay, so earlier on you joined us talking about what kind of pets they make. You said they make great family pets. They're very good with kids. Yes. Let's go a bit more into detail about the breed. I mean, it's quite a quite an old breed. I mean, I found out they're dating back 1000 yes, AD already. that's correct. What were they bred for initially? They were bred initially to hunt injured game yeah. um, and to, well, to track down injured game. Yeah, and okay. Deer and wild boar. Oh, that kind of thing. And so really sniffer dogs. Yeah, um, they were called leash hounds. Um, because if you let them off the leash, they would be gone. So they were yeah. always kept on a leash. Is it? And, and uh, I'm sure Watson, Dr. Watson, went quite crazy with all the food smells coming out he of the kitchen. He is going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay. So and today, what about today? Modern times, are they still used as as the sniffer dogs trying to find things? Or? They they are used um, extensively in the United States to track down criminals and oh, wow. escape convicts and awesome. that. Watson is being trained um, currently to track down missing children. Wow, really? That's amazing. I mean, I, I can't even begin where to, where do you start training a dog for something like that? But obviously they're very clever. They are very, they, they're not just extremely clever, yeah. their sense of smell and, and their instinct yeah. to actually track yeah. um, is, is so intense. That's why, oh, it's amazing. And I can see Bob, you've got a new friend in studio, hey? I think Bob <laughs> just wants to play. I'm, I have to actually hold him down. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about some of the common features that makes bloodhound bloodhounds. Obviously, ears sticking out immediately. Huge, yeah, long yeah. ears. Um, they have droopy eyes. Um, they have very heavy set bone structures. Mm. And yeah, they're just fantastic dogs. Okay, and do they get quite big? They do get very big. Is it? Um, they can get up to 75 to 80 kilos. 75, 80 kilos. That's quite, and so I presume it's a good, almost. It's, it's, not, <laughs> actually, it's not actually the size. It's because of their, yeah. their bone structure being so heavy. Nice. Okay, well, I can see on his, on his paws. I mean, how old is Dr. Watson? He's five months. Five months only. Yeah. Five months, and look how big he is. That's crazy. Dr. Watson, can you howl for us? Can you howl on command? Not yet. I can yawn on command. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, if, you, if, if you consider getting a bloodhound, we know now they make great family pets, they're great with kids. Yeah. They are not very energetic dogs, they, they're more walking types and yeah. sniffs. Um, what are the common health issues that one needs to be aware of? Are there any? There are. They do um, have a high um, degree of intestinal problems. So. Mm -hmm. And you can't overfeed, and you've got to watch. They they suffer from what the, is called gastric torsion. Okay. So which is where the the gut actually twists. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful with the feeding regime. All right, and also keep them on a good diet. A good and, diet. Yeah. All right, and grooming is fairly easy. As well? Very easy, low yeah. maintenance kind of pet. So it's yeah. great. Oh, that's fantastic. And lastly, just in terms of looking for a breeder or even are there adoption centers, where can you go and what should you be looking out for when wanting a purebred? I think when you visit your breeder, make sure that you can see both parents of the puppies and assess their temperaments. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's very important, especially if you're looking for family pet. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, but but temperament-wise, you say all fine. Even, even tempered, gentle, affectionate. <laughs> very <laughs> cool. <laughs> I can't get over that. Sarah, thank you so, so much it's for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank I you I mean, it's fantastic. Much. Just one last thing. How are they with tricks? I mean, they're not trick dogs. They're not trick dogs, no. Okay. Um, because of their heavy bone structure, yeah. they find it difficult to perform tricks. Giving paw, that's pretty easy, yeah. but that's about as much as you're going to okay. get. So two things they can do very well is sniff and howl. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. That was Bloodhounds this morning. An interesting fact that I also found out is that actually Pluto, Mickey Mouse's dog, was a bloodhound. Very, very interesting. Right now, let's cross over to Catlejo and Leanne for the Express. Stay with Expresso and SABC3.